Hello, welcome to IF. We post a new video every week. Please hit that like button or maybe throw us a subscribe. In this video, we will take a look at the weather and ask if it's being controlled. This week, Hurricane Irma is sweeping through the Caribbean and heading to the US. It's causing massive amounts of damage and loss of life. This hurricane's fierce winds smashed into the northeast coast of Cuba on Friday night. The massive storm moving closer to landfall, now a category 5 storm with wind speeds hitting 165 miles an hour. It's expected to hit Florida Keys on Sunday. Forecasters with the National Hurricane Center say the storm's wind speeds will increase after Irma passes Cuba then slips into the extremely warm waters near the Keys. Massive evacuations have been taking place as people brace for the worst weather we have seen in decades. I'd just like to take a moment to say stay safe. If you're in the path of the storm, get to somewhere safe. Follow all instructions and good luck. This storm being the biggest many have ever seen has the internet all abuzz. Why are we seeing such ferocious weather? Is there a man-made cause? Are nefarious groups creating and controlling these storms? Let's take a look at weather control. Do governments really control the weather? A quick search of the net will bring up pages and pages of conspiracy theories regarding the weather. But the simple answer is yes. Manipulation of the weather has been going on for some time, sometimes to help, other times to hinder. The US military ran a secret weather control program during the Vietnam War. From March 1967 until July 1972, the US military, at a cost of $3 million per year, conducted a top secret operation in Southeast Asia. They wanted to increase the rainy season and extend the monsoon rains to flood the Ho Chi Minh Trail. The Ho Chi Minh Trail was the supply route used by enemy fighters during the Vietnam War. The US was hoping to cause landslides, wash out river crossings and generally disrupt the movement of the North Vietnamese troops. This was the first major effort to manipulate the weather, weaponizing it for military purposes. This program was known by many names, Operation Popeye, Operation Motorpool and Operation Intermediary Compatriot. This was a serious program and shows that even back then governments looked to mother nature to use as an allied force the awesome power of weather being a perfect weapon. Massively powerful and untraceable compared to modern ballistic weapons. So how have things moved on since the early tests in cloud seeding during the Vietnam War? How about HARP? HARP standing for High Frequency Active Auroral Research Program. This program rarely acknowledged or mentioned in the debates on climate change does exist, with many installations easily found on map. These bases manipulate the world's weather. It can now be modified using the new generation of sophisticated electromagnetic weapons. Both the US and Russia have developed capabilities to manipulate the climate for military use, it is alleged. An article first published by the Ecologist in December 2007 summarized several in-depth and detailed articles written by the author of the HARP program. The US Air Force managed the HARP project. They confirmed that the environmental modification techniques are slated to continue. I quote, We're moving on to other ways of managing the ionosphere, which the HARP was really designed to do. To inject energy into the ionosphere to be able to actually control it. But that work has been completed. HARP is a weapon of mass destruction capable of destabilizing agricultural and ecological systems globally. Climate warfare potentially threatens the future of humanity but has casually been excluded from the reports for which the IPCC received the 2007 Nobel Peace Prize. Secret programs messing with weather has never been included in the debate on climate change. The climate change supporters do not acknowledge the role of climatic warfare namely the deliberate manipulation of climate for military use. Weather modification according to the US Air Force offers the warfighter a wide range of possible options to defeat an adversary. It says through the triggering of floods, hurricanes, droughts and earthquakes, 
weather modification will become part of a domestic and international security program and could be done unilaterally. It could have offensive and defensive applications and even be used for deterrent purposes. The ability to generate precipitation, fog and storms on Earth or to modify space weather and the production of artificial weather are all part of an integrated set of technologies. According to a report by Russian State Duma, the US carried out large-scale experiments under the HEART program creating weapons capable of breaking radio communication lines and equipment installed on spaceships and rockets and the ability to create serious accidents in electricity networks and in oil and gas pipelines. Even going as far as having a negative impact on mental health of entire regions. So it would seem the US Air Force is doing the unthinkable. The covert manipulation of weather patterns, communications and electrical power systems using their weapon of global warfare. The US is said to be disrupting and dominating entire regions. Weather manipulation is being used as a preemptive weapon par excellence. It can be directed against enemy countries or friendly nations with those nations never having knowledge of the weapon's use, destabilizing economies, ecosystems and agriculture, triggering havoc in financial and commodity markets. This disruption in agriculture creating a greater dependency on food aid and imported grains from the US and other Western countries. Now this is when things get really scary. We have focused on the US as the leaders in weather control but they are not alone. Other countries have similar programs. China spent $30 million on a controversial project that involves shooting salt and mineral filled bullets into the sky. Their mission? Make it rain. The project was part of a large campaign of weather modification. This was just one program and a program of many different techniques that the country has been using since at least 2008. The Chinese government claimed to have cleared the skies for the Beijing Olympics by forcing the rains to come early. China's Ministry of Finance aims to use this technology to create more than 60 billion cubic meters of additional rain each year by 2020. Reuters recently reported last year the drought-stricken India state of Maharashtra spent $4.5 million on cloud seeding. And then there's Russia. Recent cloud formations seen over a Russian town were thought to have been evidence of weather manipulation. The rare occurring clouds captured in photos and shared by town residents on social media raised the suspicions of weapons intelligence observers. Lenticular clouds are a cloud type formed naturally when moisture droplets in the air are forced to travel over topography formed by mountains and other large natural structures. The moisture gathers in such a way and creates these oddly shaped clouds. They gain attention quickly because of their odd shapes and appearance. Lenticular clouds commonly appear in mountainous regions because the topographical barriers are plentiful and the air patterns change quickly. These air patterns make it much easier for the clouds to form and lenticular clouds seen there are usually dismissed quickly by those that live in such areas. However, these clouds which appeared over the Russian town occurred above a flat plain with no obvious natural cause for their formation. Some meteorologists have offered that a sudden cold front could have provided the correct conditions for lenticular cloud formation, but some skeptics are very wary to accept such a conveniently easy answer. They see the clouds in Russia as obvious evidence of weather manipulation by the government and or military researchers. So these supposed programs in many different countries could hint that we are in fact at weather war. Each country trying to pull precious fresh rainwater to their lands or taking the opportunity to worsen storms and natural weather fronts as to cause harm and problems to non-friendly nations causing economic havoc or even economic opportunity using the weather. This is where we come full circle. Hurricane Irma. Some think this terrible hurricane a monster of destruction is being manipulated. Weather manipulation believers cite a number of explanations. Rush Limbaugh says hurricanes are manufactured and hyped by the media to sell bottled water and emergency supplies. California contractor Dane Wingington who runs geoengineeringwatch.org believes Irma and Harvey are efforts to keep the eastern half of the US artificially cool as the rest of the globe boils and that includes the western US which he calls a climate sacrifice zone. 
Do you think governments can control the weather? Do you think they should be allowed to? What problems or evidence do you see for weather manipulation? Please leave your comments below. If you are anywhere near the hurricane, please stay safe. If you have been affected by Irma, stay strong and I hope you are well. As always, if you like this video, please pound that like button. If you could, give the channel a subscribe, that would be awesome. Or you can find the weekly posts on our social media where you can join our groups or friend us. Thanks for watching. Till next time.